one to share with you. Not this at all. But the extent of my spring decorating. I love him. I got him last year. I don't even remember where I got him. But I love him. Look at that. Look at that finish. Is he not beautiful? And then, when I went to Finders Pickers in Coleman, I found the sheet mold. She had made the little bird nest. I don't even know if this should be displayed like this. Maybe, maybe off to an angle a little bit. Don't even know if that really goes together, but that's the extent of my spring decorating. Okay, I apologize ahead of time for the light coming in, but I was just trying to find somewhere comfortable to get. And I just piled up on my couch. You see this freedom that I'm moving around? It's because I don't have a boot on. <laughs> Tomorrow is the official date that I get to take the boot off and leave it off. It is Mama's 96th birthday. Of course, I'm gonna take you along. And, uh, but I just got in from physical therapy and I just wanted to talk to you about some things. Uh, where do I even begin? <laughs> no, I'm not going anywhere. Don't, don't worry that I'm quitting YouTube. I'm not. God's got too much to do with me. Um, my heart is full right now. There's just times when God does a God wink at you and your heart gets full and you know that you don't necessarily deserve the goodness that's bestowed upon you, but he sees something in you that he wants to give you an atta girl and you to keep going. I got an envelope. The post office while ago, just, and I knew it wasn't a card. I knew by this kind of paper that it was a letter. And it was postmark New Jersey. And so I thought, well, I get, I'll read it as soon as I get home. And I did, I sat down. I like my house quiet during the day when John's not here, the TV's not on, and that's when I like it. I like this room. And I usually sit over there in those chairs. I was trying to give y'all a little change of scenery here now the light's glaring. But this is a God wink letter from a subscriber. It's from Beth in New Jersey. It's a two-page letter, which takes a few minutes to write. And she goes on to tell me that my channel was um, recommended during Christmas. My home tour is always very successful and I feel like that's where I get a lot of my subscribers. And then obviously I have 11,000 subscribers. So obviously 11,000 like something on my channel, but not enough that they watch it all the time. And you know, lots of times there's seasons that you watch channels anyway. There is with me. I'll watch people sometimes and I have a select few that I watch all the time that I'm, I'm waiting for them to put out a video. Some of them I have developed friendships with. And uh, and then there's some that I won't watch their channel as much sometimes. I'm a big YouTube watcher. I like it better than I do regular TV. And then there's seasons. And I know that when I do Vlogmas, it pulls a lot of people in. As I've told you, the way the algorithm works, the more views and likes that you get on a video, it helps bring up your other videos. And if I was career-minded um, with YouTube, I would really study the algorithms. I would be concerned. They change a lot. But I've had my career in life. Um, I'm retired from the college and love that time. Wouldn't want to go back, but absolutely thank God for the opportunity to work there and the young people he put in my life, the employees he put in my life, some of the supervisors. <laughs> so, a lot of the times y'all say, well, when do you post? 
when I want to. <laughs> That's the great thing about being retired, when I want to and when I can. And um, that's the retired life, you know? And then you get a letter like this. And I've shared letters with y'all before. And I'm not gonna share per se, word for word, but Beth just tells me that we couldn't be any more different in life than anything, that we are so different. We're at different stages in life, different cultures, different ethnic cities, different age brackets, you name it, we're different. But she said, uh, 2022 Christmas vlogs pulled her in. And then she said recently, one of the Bible lessons, and I think it was, um, well, it was the very first one, John chapter one, one through 13 pulled her in and she said it was after watching this that she had a newly found appreciation of my channel. Despite our many differences, we share a love for the Lord and his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And she says that we couldn't have been any different. We couldn't be any more different. <clears throat> Is that not like the family of God though? That he brings so many different people together in a common bond that's him. Last night, where was that? Where somebody had sent me a video. It was Mexico or Venezuela or somewhere like that, that they started singing in their language, a gospel song in a supermarket and it just took off. Every Oh, and the song was Because He Lives, but it was in whatever, Spanish, whatever, language. And you could tell it was not planned. You could tell it was very impromptu. And, you know, I've always said that about music, that music is such a universal language and how that it brings people together. And that's what God does. He brings people together. And I, I, I just can't tell you, Beth, how much this letter means to me to know that God is working through those lessons because what has happened through me posting the Bible lessons and they are lower views, it is not sharing my videos unless you're subscribed, which you should be, unless you get the notification bell, which you should be, because I'm getting lower views on the Bible lessons, and that's that's going to increase. Not not for my glory, for His glory. There's almost been an aha moment in every one of the lessons so far. Susan from Susan's Cozy Condo said her pastor had just done a message on the woman at the well just in recent weeks, but she said, Suzanne, I didn't know the background about the Babylonians and how the Samaria people came and why there was such a dislike. I didn't either, Susan. And it's when I sit over there in that chair in the quietness of this house during the day and God leads me to one commentary and then I pull another Bible and I pull another Bible that I get those aha moments. And that's, you know, that makes all the sense in the world why it was even more taboo for a Jewish man, Jesus, to be talking to the woman at the well is because of the hatred. And unless you're a Bible scholar or a pastor or somebody that's just delved into the Bible really deep, you don't know those things. We probably, an average Christian that does not have the time to study in depth like I'm studying now for the first time in my life, you don't have that time to go into those commentaries and to all this and you know it's like I've told y'all before with Ashley three boys playing three sports three different locations working maintaining a home a husband herself the laundry I'm just proud of her for reading a devotional because I know that God is using it to speak to her but does she have that kind of time to dig in and to study no 
That's the reason these lessons are so important because you can sit there and listen to me tell you. And then God takes a simple woman. I told a white girl, we were texting last night. I told her, I said, Amy, the, she had done a Louis Vuitton um, replica purse. It was just gorgeous. And I said, I have a Louis Vuitton that I carry and I love the purse. I would love the purse if it came from Walmart because it fits my shoulder so good. And would this arm have been broken? I don't have the flexibility in this wrist. So it's Ashley's real Louis Vuitton. She carried it as a diaper bag and um, carried it for years. And I've carried it for almost two years now just because it's such a great purse. Now, do I like it that it's Louis Vuitton? Yes, but would I ever for myself pay the price of a real Louis Vuitton? No. <laughs> and that's what Amy said. She said, I'm not about to pay that price. I'm not either. And um, I told Amy, I said, the older I get, the simpler I get. That it takes less things for me. And it's more about quality. And I think that's, you know, as you change in the seasons of life. So, my views going down kind of bumped me at first. I was getting 1,500, 1,800 on every view. And some people are just not going to listen to Bible lessons because they're not interested. But I pray that God turns their heart, that they can say, man, I need this with the world that we're living in. And then, you know, a lot of you have told me, well, I've, I, I got I to gotta have time to sit down and, and I understand that. But more and more, God has just been showing me the last few weeks, Suzanne, just, just teach. Just teach. Don't worry about the views. Just teach. My word will not return void. The Bible says that, that his word will never return void. Do I make mistakes? Sure I do. When I taught the lesson, the first miracle, the wedding at Cana, I said there was 20 to 30 pitchers that they filled with water. That was incorrect. And it was so far deep into it. There was only six containers that were 20 to 30 gallons each. Well, there was no way I could have put something at the bottom, but I didn't even catch it till later. So I make mistakes. I may even teach something wrong, but let me assure you that when I teach it, I've studied it. And if it's wrong, it's just because my interpret I'm I'm not trained to do this. And but then God has Beth all the way up in New Jersey. We're about as far apart as we can get from the south to the north or northeast. And he has her to sit down and write a beautiful letter saying, keep on keeping on. It's just those things that I give him such praise and worship and gratitude. And I say, Beth, thank you for giving to the Lord. You know that old song says, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. And that's talking about ministering. But you see, what Beth didn't know, she said, I started to comment. Then I thought, no, I'm going to sit down right she didn't know this was actually going to minister to me. I minister to y'all. And then she turns around and so many, so many of you do. You minister to me. That's God. That is so God. This is a God wink. I love it. I love it. And I thank you, Beth. I thank you so much. There's a lot going on in my mind today to share with y'all. <laughs> Look at me sitting here all propped up with no boot on. And I just had physical therapy and it went good. And they, I said, Braxton's the young man. I said, Braxton, I think I've done really good through this surgery. He said, Suzanne, you have done fantastic through this surgery. And he said, I don't say that lightly. He said, you have done fantastic. All praise and glory to the Father above. All praise and glory to Dr. Waldrop for doing an excellent surgery. And all hugs and kisses that I can give to a beautiful husband that never left my side for the five, first five weeks. That made sure that every step that I took was protected and he was watching over me.
and for the food and for the cards y'all sent. I've got a stack of cards over there that I haven't even shared with y'all. And I've probably got them mixed up with some other stuff on because I was trying to get me a container and uh, to send. And so I'll try to get those pulled out. But Sunday when I was sitting in church, I thought about y'all. It was such a powerful, worshipful Sunday. Just powerful. And um, <clears throat> I thought about y'all. And I thought about the Bible lessons and all that, you know, that we were doing. And I thought, I feel like the Lord put this thought in my mind to remind y'all to do what you can at this time to ask God, what do you want from me at this time in my life? You know my schedule, you know my limitations, you know the things that I can make better, you know the things that I really need to work on. What would you, and I wanna propose this to you today because I thought about y'all, what would you have me to do during this time of my life? I am just trying to teach as quickly as I can. I told y'all I'm about four or five chapters ahead of what I'm teaching because every night or some days I see it and I'll do a whole chapter. And so I'm reading and studying faster, but you know, we're not on a time schedule. And it almost looks like that if I time it right, we're going to get close to the crucifixion of Christ, close to Easter. I don't know if it'll work out that way or not. Wouldn't that be beautiful, though, if it did, if it worked out that very week? Um, I don't want you to stress when you get behind on the lessons, but I want you to make it a priority. And those of y'all that are vested in me and I'm vested in you, I want you to make it a priority in your life to watch the lessons, but I don't want you to stress when you get behind. I want you to say to God, and I felt this about y'all. I want you to say, Father, what is it that you want most from me right now at this season in my life? What can I improve upon? And what are you proud of? What can I do with better quality? But I want, I want you to find out what is exactly right for you right now. Don't look at what I'm doing and thinking, oh my goodness, she's doing all this studying and I can't do this. I'm retired. I have an empty nest. I have a quiet house. I miss the hustle and bustle of work. I miss the camaraderie with employees and, and other um, other employees that I loved, but I love this time in my life, and this is my time to be doing this. What is your time for right now? Don't allow the enemy to stress you out. Appreciate every day. Give God the glory every day. Thank him for waking you up. Thank him, thank him for giving you peaceful rest. Thank him for your children. Thank him for your husband, your wife. Thank him for your roof over your head, the food on your table. Thank him for protecting you and for guiding you and giving you wisdom. Thank him for the things that we often take for granted. But don't allow the enemy to stress you out about who you are to God. You ask him, Father, what do you want from me? I, I just, I don't know. I know that's for somebody because the Lord impressed me upon that in church Sunday. Now I'm going to change gears a little bit. Now that I gave you a little mini sermon there. A lot of you have asked what I have done to lose weight. You've asked what Ashley's done to lose weight. Ashley started out last year on a very strict gym schedule and kept it up for a year and lost a lot of weight. She put some of that weight back on, not all of it, no means by all of it, 
but it just got to where it was impossible with her schedule with the boys to continue going to the gym like she was. She felt like she was sacrificing time that she needed to be at home. So back several months ago, she and Michael both started the Manjaro shots. And she has lost a significant amount of weight with the Manjaro shots under a doctor's care. Kind of concerns me because she's, Manjaro is not approved for diabetes, where Ozempic and Wagovi is for diabetes. You've heard the stories that, and she's no, she's maintaining and working out again now. And she's little. And I'm so proud to see her remove so much body fat. Does things like that kind of worry me? It does a little bit, but I trust in God. I trust in God. And actually smart. She would know if she was not feeling right. But now, it's just like anything you take. There could be long-term results. Um, me. I started last year. Uh, this time last year, I was in the boot trying to keep from having surgery. And I was doing physical therapy and dragging that boot. I was at my highest. I was four pounds lighter than my highest I'd ever been. But when we went to Gatlinburg with the choir, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is it. I just struggled. So somewhere along the summer, I started really cutting back on carbs and sugar. My A1C was a five in August of 19, which was really good for an overweight person. And when I contracted the um, virus in March of 2020, one of the, and I had, I had some of the first of it that hit here. One of the side effects I had from that was my hands burning, which my hands, are hot a lot with the dysautonomia. You can see redness in them now. The dysautonomia causes temperature changes in your body and my hands hold a lot of heat. When I hold hands with people at church, they're like, oh my gosh, your hands feel so good. But I knew something was wrong. And so I went to my doctor, I had the virus in March and I think I went to him in July and I told him, you know, I fasted and everything before I went. He tested my A1C. It had gone to an 8.5 after the virus. And I was officially called a diabetic. I was very, very, very upset about that because I knew that my A1C had been good before then. Um, I started working. We had to do our... Um, he wanted to put me on Trulicity, which is an injection once a week. I tried to take the, um, I can never remember the name of it, Neurotin, Neurotin. I tried to take that to begin with and it, uh, it just made me sleepy and everything. And so anyway, we discussed medicines and my medical doctor at that time thought the Trulicity uh, injection once a week would be good for me. So I started on it took the American Diabetes classes. You had to do three and we did them on Zoom because the virus was still going around. And um, Trulicity kind of curved my appetite and I lost some weight. And I don't remember exactly what I got down to. I think I lost about 20 pounds because it's the semi semaglutides, I think is what is in all this medicine that slows down your digestive system. I haven't really studied it. Um, but anyway, as my body became accustomed to it, it really didn't do it. I mean, it was working for the diabetes because I did not want to go on insulin. I got my A1C back to, down to a 5.6. And then when I had it checked again, it had gone up back to six, which is still not horrible, but I wanted it in the fives. And so, when I started to my new doctor, I went over there and I had just really been watching what I eat, all that. Uh, I had lost some more. And it's hard to tell you exactly 
where because this has been such a process of time, you know, I'd gain, I would lose, I'd gain, I'd lose, just like I've done that for years. So when I found out for sure that I was gonna have this surgery and I went back to the doctor to let him check my A1C and everything, I asked him about the Manjaro. I said, I really need to lose some weight before this surgery. I knew I was seeing the doctor in the fall and I knew I wasn't having the surgery till January. So I asked him and he said, I, I just don't know about putting you on that. He said, but we will try changing your Trulicity to Ozempic. He said, they're pretty much the same medicine, but Ozempic has had good results with weight loss. And I said, well, do you think that's safe? And he said, absolutely. I mean, you're a type two diabetic. Uh, we're trying to keep your A1C down and, and you do need to lose weight. And I said, oh, I know I need to lose weight. I need to, I truly could lose a hundred pounds. And so he said, we'll try it, see if you can handle it. He said, some people can't take it, makes them sick. And I said, well, the Trulicity made me sick when I started it, but I just stayed with it. Makes you nauseated. And um, so uh, we started out on a very low dosage, the 0.25, and uh, we started it. I started that in, I think I started that in October, I think. I think, I think that's right. So when I went back, and, and it did make me a little sick, but what it does for me is it does not keep me from being hungry. I get hungry, just like regular. It's just that I get fuller quicker. And once you start that, and once you ever start eating less, you need less. It is the honest to goodness truth. You need less. I really started, you know, if, if you notice, I have my Yeti with me all the time. I drink water, lemon water. I use Propel in it. If I'm gonna drink a lot of water, I need something in it. But a lots of times I will drink Propel, empty the Yeti halfway, and then add more water, so I'm just getting a hint. Sometimes I'll do a third of a packet instead of a whole packet, just to get that tiny little taste. And the more water you drink, the more water you crave. That is honest to goodness true. I do drink diet drinks. They have sodium, which probably slows me down. But there's many times when I can go get a diet drink that it just curbs, you know, me wanting to eat something. So by the time I had gone back to the doc, to the surgeon in December to, um, to do my final checkup and to schedule my surgery, I had lost 20 pounds. I, I was down 20 pounds from the original seven or eight that I'd lost. I think I'd lost seven pounds just on my own when I went to my doctor. And then I think that I lost 13 more pounds between October and December. And you know, you lose faster at the beginning too. So um, I'd lost, when I saw him in December, I said, well, I'm glad to tell you that I'm 20 pounds down. And he said, that's great. That's great. That's gonna help you. Anything you can lose before the surgery is gonna help you because of the weight on your leg and all that. So, very pleased, and my goal was during that five to six weeks that I was non-weight bearing was not to gain any weight. And you know we had a ton of food brought in here. <laughs> we had a lot of food brought in here. But after surgery, being put to sleep, being uncomfortable, my appetite just was not gung-ho at all. There was times people brought stuff in, I ate very little of it. There was times they would bring something in and it tasted so good and I ate a lot of it. But during that time, during my journey with diabetes, I can eat apples and oranges and grapes where it shoots some people's blood sugar just sky high. It doesn't mind. I don't know why. So during that time, sugar-free water sickles were my friend when I you know, was recuperating from surgery and apples and navel oranges, and I had grapes a few times, but really apples and oranges were just like my friend. They were refreshing to me, and John was fixing me water all day long. Just, he was keeping my Yeti full to sit on my table because he wanted me to stay real hydrated. 
Plus I was taking the blood thinner so that I wouldn't have a blood clot and we were just, you know, trying to do everything. I, um, Clarissa, my sweet friend, friend Clarissa that I told y'all about the other day, she brought me the sweetest gift bag with a beautiful water container and I don't know, but chocolate. <laughs> and I ate it. <laughs> I ate it because I needed something sweet too. But somehow through that recuperation period, I lost 10 more pounds. And I think it was the fruit. I think it was the minimal amount that I was eating. Was the Ozempic doing that? It was, it was helping, yes. But a lot of it was what I was eating. And ever since the February the 28th, well, and so during that recuperation period, I ended up getting up to 40 pounds weight loss. I think I'm telling y'all that right. Okay, so I was 20 when I saw the doctor um, in October. And then, so then that gave me November and December. So I think I lost about eight more pounds those months. I did great through th Thanksgiving and Christmas. Did great. Just had my mind made up because I needed a 16 surgery. So then it was getting close to 30 to 35 pounds, somewhere along in there. And then through January and February, I lost more to where I got to 40. So February the 28th, I had lost 40 pounds. And people finally started noticing. People at church didn't notice forever. And then like this past weekend, everybody started noticing. It's crazy. I just feel so better from having 40 pounds off. I cannot tell you. This face looks so much better. My clothes fit so differently. I just feel so much better. So I had, and I know this video is going to be long. I had to go off my anti-inflammatory drugs. I took Celebrex for my fibromyalgia. I had to go off of it and I panicked. I had to go off the Celebrex 10 days before surgery. And I said, John, I'm going to be hurting so bad. I'm going to be hurting so bad. But I really didn't. Didn't think that much about it. And then I had to take a whole bottle of blood thinners because I was sitting, 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 sitting to keep from having a blood clot, which praise God, I didn't. But you know what? I've not gone back on my Celebrex. I told y'all that. Because I think the inflammation is down a lot from the 40 pounds. I'm eating less sugar. Do I eat some sugar? Yes. Do I want a whole bag of jelly beans? Yes, I do. I'll probably eat a bag. Before, I did eat part of a bag, just a little tiny bag, and then I threw the rest of them away. But will I eat another bag before Easter? Probably. Um, and sugar is a very inflammatory drug, uh, substance. But anyway, so I, I, in my notes section, I've kept up with my weight. Every time I would drop a pound, I would put the date. And I, So I told John last week, I said, I gotta buckle down. I haven't lost any weight in a month. And a lot of it was eating junk. And then I'd eat good, and then I'd eat some junk. And um, so I really, really have buckled down the last week and a half. And as of this morning, I had dropped three more pounds. So I'm at 43. When John and I go to eat, which we haven't a lot, you know, now we're, we're starting to eat out again now. But we didn't, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks. But when I go, we went Sunday to a barbecue place and I got the barbecue and a salad and they was fries on there. I think I ate two fries. But I had them to bring me a to-go plate. And I literally stopped at half of the plate, half of the salad, half of the barbecue. And I scooped it up and put it in that to-go plate and brought it home. I'm telling you, once you start, it, it's mind over matter. The Ozempic has helped, but the Ozempic is not doing the work. I am. Will I stay on Ozempic forever? I hope to reverse type 2 diabetes totally. I hope to reverse it. And I don't know how long, but I will stay on it as long as my doctor feels like I need to. And I do feel like it's helping me with the weight loss. I do feel like it's helping me. Um, but, but I'm actually doing the work. Because I could push through and still eat as much as I used to, but I just don't want it as much. I get fuller quicker. And it's so true. The more you eat, the more you want. And that's the way Ashley's found out. 
that she can be satisfied on so much less. And you know, I'm, I'm not an active person. I look at a way girl and there's times that a way girl will eat so clean and then she'll just have the cravings for a cheeseburger or Mexican or something like that. And, but she moves. Her and her sister both exercise. I have never exercised to amount to anything. And my goal is to start walking and to walk with some weights. Um, my goal is, I don't know if it'll happen this year, but I want to join an exercise class at one of our gyms. I want to move that much. Uh, I've got to really take care of this foot for a while. And uh, so my goal is to be different. I went to my little place after physical therapy, got my chicken salad, ate about a third of the container, the rest is in the refrigerator and I'm satisfied. I'll probably have an apple this afternoon and then I'll eat more chicken salad, but we fixed, um, we got a rotisserie chicken last night from the grocery store and ate it over just the regular lettuce blend, but I love the spinach leaves too. I love the mixed greens. Ate it over that with some feta cheese and limited my dressing. Just, I don't swamp my dressing and, you know, I don't just saturate my salads anymore. I get a taste of it. Sometimes I dip it. So I'm using very wise things, but that's a long story to tell you. I mean, there's been a little bit of everything in this video, but y'all have asked me several times, what are you doing to lose weight? It is a combination of things. Would I take Ozempic if I was not a type two diabetic? I personally probably would not. The Manjaro shots, I don't know. They say everybody in Hollywood's taking Ozempic. I know when I went to go get my Ozempic, at my drugstore a couple months ago, they didn't have it. And I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm taking this for diabetes. So he upped me. I could get the next prescription, I just couldn't get the one that I was on. And he upped me on it. And so, and that has worked fine. I haven't been upped any more than that. And hopefully will not go up any more than that as long as I feel like it's working. So, but do you see what, did, I had to buckle down last week and this week to get any weight to shift, and I have. I have really buckled down. I really would love to get 40 more pounds off. That would be a total of 80. And, um, you know, that's gonna put me below 200 pounds that I've not been at for years now. Well, John and I will be married 25 years in May, and I was below 200 when he and I started dating. So that's how long it's been. And so, but there again, I'm healthier. I'm happier. I feel better in my clothes. I'm still wearing a lot of the same clothes. They just look different. And I will have to have new clothes. And that's a scary thing. Because then you think, oh, what if I buy new clothes, get rid of these, and I gain the weight back? I'm just saying, Lord, give me the strength. You know I'm healthier. You know I feel better. You know I look better. Give me the strength to keep this temple cleansed the way that you want it cleansed and to be in the order that you want it to be. It's a daily battle. And why is everything that's so dadgum good so dadgum fattening? I mean, really. Why do jelly beans have to be full of sugar? Mm. John ate one, and when I got that little bag, he said, Susan, this is just pure sugar. I said, I know, I love it. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, that's my journey, and every day I have to have a made-up mind that I'm going to eat good that day. Somebody brought me a cake, Karen brought me a case of Rocheros when she first came. I ate them. I've never eaten Rocheros. Didn't know how good they were. I ate them. So I don't think there's anything wrong with having a little piece of chocolate every now and then. It helps me to know that there's hope that I can have something. And at birthday parties, I'm going to have a piece of birthday cake. And But like Christmas, I had ordered a couple of cakes, like a red velvet cake. And you know what we did? We got them out of the house the next day. It's about changing. And once you get started, and God helps you, you get, you get started on it, you can do it. You can do it. 
So anyway, I love you guys. This video is already long. And let's go edit it and get it up. I love y'all. Bye.